hello students welcome back today we are going to discuss few concepts from principles of inheritance and variation the next concept mutations mutations can cause genetic variations nothing but it leads to bring changes in genetic composition definition for this mutations mutation is a phenomena that cause alternation of dna sequences and consequently results in change in the genotype and phenotype of an organism is called mutation simply we can say that mutation is a nothing but sudden change in genetic material or dna is called mutation a mutation is a permanent change in the dna molecule of an organism mutations occur randomly and may be spontaneous or induced so here induced means uh, by force mutations are heritable changes that means uh, some of the mutations may transfer from one generation to another generation there are two types of mutations have been recognized they are gene mutations and chromosomal aberrations let's discuss the type of uh, mutations the first one gene mutation this gene mutation is also called as uh, point uh, mutation it is also called point mutation gene mutations or point mutations are due to a structural change in a dna it is due to the structural change in a dna molecule at a single locus or single location gene mutation could be dominant recessive lethal harmless x linked or autosomal so the gene mutation could be it may be dominant mutation or it may be recessive we already know that dominant and recessive dominant means that mutation may express its character and recessive it may suppress it does not it may present but it is not express its character recessive lethal some mutations may leads to the death harmless it cannot cause any harm x linked that means the mutations may heritable through x linked genes or autosomal so that means uh, it may through autosomes that is 22 pairs of chromosomes so that mutation may occur in the autosomes or may occur in x linked genes already we clearly discussed in previous video x linked so that means uh, the somatic characters present on the, the genes which are responsible for some of the somatic characters present on x chromosome called x linked this linked genes are absent in y chromosome no linked genes are present that means uh, no genes controls the somatic characters on y chromosome but y x chromosome having genes which control the somatic characters or vegetative characters 
such genes are called as X-linked. So, the mutation may occur in that X-linked genes or occur in autosomal. The gene mutations can be due to duplication, insertion, deletion, or substitution of bases. So, the base pairs, bases. So, this uh, we can know about this topic duplication, insertion, deletion, or substitution of bases. That bases concept we will learn in the sixth chapter molecular biology or molecular basis of inheritance, in that it is related to the DNA and DNA structure and it has some base pairs so that is uh, adenine is always bound with uh, thymine that is one base pair cytosine is always bound with guanine that is one base pair so substitution of base pairs that base pair change is also leads to the change in the character that is is also considered as the mutation that sudden change is due to substitution of that base pairs is also leads to the mutations and deletion and insertion of nucleotides nucleotides are the uh, units in a dna nucleotides cause a frame shift mutations remember it deletion and insertion of uh, nucleotides causes a frame shift mutations that this word is also we need to remember we will get a more information about this frame shift substitutions insertions and deletions in the molecular biology the second type of uh, mutations uh, chromosomal aberrations so what is the uh, meaning of these uh, aberrations so aberrations are uh, nothing but uh, the aberrations it uh, means that variation it means that uh, variation or abnormality abnormality or deviation these are the meanings of this aberration so chromosomal variation or chromosomal deviation or chromosomal abnormality so aberration means these are the three words represent this aberration so chromosomal deviation is leads to the mutations or chromosomal abnormality causes mutation chromosomal aberrations or abnormalities are the change in the number so the deviation is occurred the chromosomal deviation or variation or abnormality occur due to the change in the number of chromosomes so for example humans having 46 chromosomes so that chromosomal deviation is occurred due to change in their number so suppose this 46 may become 47 this is one abnormality it may become 45 it may it is another deviation so either increase or maybe decrease in the number of chromosomes or the chromosomal deviation occurs due to the structural change of the chromosomes change in the structure so chromosomal aberrations or deviations the possibility of that is two 
one is by changing their number and the deviations is due to change in the structure of chromosome now let's see that point so, uh, chromosomal aberrations that means uh, abnormality due to structural changes due to structural change occurs due to deletion the structural change in the chromosome occurs due to deletion insertion duplication inversion or translocation of segment of dna due to change in this segment of dna leads to the change in the structure of chromosomes that leads to the deviation in the chromosome next chromosomal deviation or abnormality due to change in number due to change in number caused by addition or loss of one or more chromosome that is number addition here already we mentioned that 46 uh, human being having 46 chromosome the change of that chromosome number due to addition plus indicates addition of this 46 become 47 this is addition of chromosome or deletion minus so by reduced their number 45 so change in chromosomal abnormality due to change in number that is occurred or may be caused by addition of more chromosomes or may be loss of one or more chromosomes leads to the chromosomal abnormality or deviation or variation the next concept pedigree analysis introduction to this pedigree analysis the study of inheritance in human is very difficult due to the following reasons so inheritance means transferring that characters from one generation to another generation that study in human is very difficult so why it is difficult so let's see that reasons one controlled crosses cannot be made in the human number of offsprings is very small in human beings lifespan is a very long sexual maturity is attained after at least 12 years age so if you choose a human being for the inheritance study you need to wait till 12 years and as per indian constitution for girls marriage age is 18 and for boys the marriage age is 21 years that means you need to wait a minimum of 21 years to get an offspring many phenotypes are expressed in later stages of life not in early stages so already we discussed in the earlier of this chapter mendel why he chooses that we plant because it is bisexual it produces bisexual flowers it is easy to conduct cross pollination as well as self pollination and lifespan is very short and it can produce a more number of offsprings in a single generation these are all the benefits and they can he selected nearly 77 not 70 seven contrasting characters that means 14 characters tall dwarf tall is one character dwarf is another so contrasting character seven pairs he studied but such type of uh, uh, character phenotypes uh, 
we can observe in a human in later stages not in early stages so these are all the difficulties uh, to study the inheritance of the human so then how it overcome so to overcome this difficulty so the scientist uh, that is called a uh, francis galton francis galton uh, recommended the pedigree analysis for the genetic triads that mean characters in human so to overcome these problems so he proposed this pedigree analysis for the genetic characters in the human beings let's see the definition and a significance of this pedigree analysis in human beings so it is defined as pedigree analysis is defined as analysis of triads in a several generations of a family is called pedigree analysis so analysis of a triads that mean characters in several generations of a family is called a pedigree analysis significance of this pedigree analysis in human beings so pedigree analysis is nothing but a study uh, provides a strong tool that means a mechanism which is used or utilized to trace the inheritance of a specific character abnormality or disease so this pedigree analysis is helpful to trace the inheritance of a specific character how the specific character is transferred from one generation to another generation so for example in this generation in girls that means uh, females xx so in that xx we are expressed that xx is the a female and xy it is uh, considered as male so now the transfer of characters it is from mother side or maybe from father side that specific character from which parent it is transferred that we can identify through this pedigree analysis and uh, that abnormality so the deviation or change due to chromosomal number increase in number or due to change in the structure of chromosome that is also how it is inherited that abnormality or maybe disease we can observe through this pedigree analysis it helps a genetic counselors to advise a couples about the possibility of having genetically defective children so this we are uh, studied under this uh, reproductive health amniocentesis it is a test to conduct the identify the a chromosomal disorders by testing the amnio amniotic fluid so by using that method the genetic counselors advised the couple about the possibility of uh, having genetically defective children and next in certain cases it may help to identify the genotypes of offsprings yet to be born in certain cases identify the genotype that means genetic composition of offsprings yet to be born they need to born not uh, Uh, genotypes of offsprings already born it is yet to be born need to born before a delivery in some cases they identify the genotypes and also the pedigree analysis helps to identify possible origin of defective gene in a family or in a population possible origin 
so we know suppose if you draw the your family chart so father mother or otherwise their father and mother and then you will write your father and mother from that you so like that if you try to uh, draw your family tree then if any defective gene is present that possible origin in that tree in that flow chart of your family where the possibility of that origin it may starts in previous generation or the previous generation or maybe so like that take a four or five generations of your family tree four or five generation so you, you suppose if you consider you are uh, or the end a uh, generation suppose you are the present generation and before your father and your father's father and then so your father's uh, grandfather suppose if it is the first generation your grandfather is second generation your father is third generation and you are the fourth generation start from the fifth generation if any disease or defective gene that is origin either in your first generation or maybe second or maybe third that will be identified through this pedigree analysis it is helpful to identify the possible origin of defective gene in the family or in a population so pedigree symbols so now whatever the study they done on the particular defective gene or maybe origin of that defective gene they are represented that analysis it is uh, represented in a chart so that we will consider as the we will consider as uh, pedigree charts pedigree charts this pedigree charts uh, represents with uh, various symbols is represented with various symbols let's see that uh, symbols which are used to represent a male female defective male defective female carrier female mating dizygotic twins fraternal twins or maybe sorry uh, identical twins or uh, a stillbirth that means uh, stillbirth means uh, death before delivery so how these all are represent in the form of a symbols in this pedigree charts let's see the symbols used in this pedigree analysis so in this slide we will know about the some symbols which are represent for only males only males in this slide so male so male in a pedigree chart the male is always with a square that is uh, if this square indicates the male in a pedigree chart and the square with a number with a number then it is a represent that is a male two in number that represent the number of individuals and this is a pro band male that means here a square is a male the arrow mark indicates that he is a, a genetically worked out pro band means a, a study is done on that particular male so the arrow mark pro band and this is a, the square diagonally if it is cross line then it is indicates the diseased male that means that male having the disease and uh, with uh, shaded a uh, circle that means uh, square indicates the affected male affected that means uh, if any disease color blindness that is affected male color blind it is a normal male so here the only square is normal male that uh, shaded square indicates the 
affected male now the square with the lines that indicates affected history so it has a previous history of this particular a disease now the square it is indicates with examined male examined so male is examined for that particular any genetic study now fraternal this symbol is used for the fraternal twins fraternal it is also called as di zygotic di zygotic twins are also called as fraternal twins so this represents the di zygotic twins and now this symbol it is represents with uh, it is a identical twins in previous slide there is no line this line is uh, not there then it is di zygotic now this is identical twins or maybe mono zygotic mono zygotic twins that means a mono zygotic with a same sex and dizygotic twins they may be sex or different dizygotic mono zygotic always the sexes of same now this representation a it is adapted that means they are not born to their parents uh, they are adapted from others the born to others they are adapted from the other parents such individuals are represent like this now till now the male Uh, symbols are completed let's come to the uh, female so the female normal female it represents a uh, with a circle square is the male and circle is the female and the circle with the number 2 that means two female individuals next uh, proband female that means uh, the female individual its genetic makeup is worked out that is proband now let's see this some more almost uh, we can observe all these except one we are not because uh, in uh, males uh, carriers are absent in males uh, we cannot uh, carriers are always uh, females carrier so carrier representation circle with a dot that is carrier examined female it is a circle we can draw a plus on the top if this plus if it is coming down it is a representation of female and affected history by history that is uh, as lines and uh, shaded circle that is affected female and uh, a crossed circle that is a diseased female all these shaded and uh, crossed as well as this uh, uh, cross lined as well as this uh, this all all these we are seen in the males also but this is uh, present only in female dotted circle it is a carrier of a particular disease we can observe that carrier suppose color blindness is a carrier in female color blindness is a carrier in females and baldness bald head that is also a carrier in females so some genetic disorders uh, in female acts as a carrier but males are not a carriers they may be normal or affected 
let's see uh, how these uh, twins are represented in uh, females so it is as usual instead of uh, squares we are using circles so double circle with this uh, connection it is considered as fraternal dizygotic the two individuals are separately developed from the zygote two separate zygote, zygotes that is fraternal it is nothing but di zygotic di zygotic twins and uh, if it is clear so in the same pattern if it is connect the two squares this and this squares are sorry circles this and this circles are connected with a line then it indicates the identical twins in females if it is male then these circles become squares and adopted female so the female is adopted from other parents a indicates that adopted female so up to now this representation and some other common are there that is sex unknown if you are studying a particular any unknown one because uh, inborn child we are studying inborn so uh, such representation we will go for this this is the representation of unsex unknown sex so after birth it may be male or may be female unknown one and now still birth so this representation is indicates already we studied this word in the reproductive health still birth so died before birth is called as the still birth so still birth is nothing but individual died before means in mother's womb itself the fetus is died died before birth is considered as uh, still births nest this symbol the same uh, sex unknown symbol with a line that is uh, considered as miscarriage miscarriage that means uh, ectopic pregnancy that means general implantation is occurred on uterus instead other than uterus it is considered as a ectopic pregnancy so that type the miscarriage is considered a, that representation and in some books this representation is also mentioned with a, a triangle it may represent represent like this also the miscarriage either this or this in some books now pregnancy so to represent a pregnant lady so this is the symbol is used so in some books it is directly mentioned with it here it is given dotted line or maybe clear lines also it is represented through clear So you can represent like this. This is also a correct for the pregnancy. And now marriage between. So it is a marriage or mating. So sometimes the word it is using that is the mating or maybe a marriage. That symbol is and the marriage between the cousins are maybe closely related couple so marriage between closely related that is the symbol double line will be present that is closely related that means uh, the marriage uh, between suppose uh, a cousin marriages marriage between cousins so let's see that uh, some other 
are some more symbols used in pedigree analysis so this already we knew that uh, without this line suppose uh, if it is square it is connected with a, a circle that we will call as the mating or maybe marriage so if it is a cross lined that line is cross lined like this then it is considered as a divorced couple or the couple is separated divorced that is the symbol mentioned here divorced and here it is one more that is a couple and without any children are called this symbol is indicates that couple without children so now dizygotic twins fraternal dizygotic it is also represent we a draw the uh, symbols we observe the symbols in male and female male and female suppose uh, if you draw the two circles and this is also dizygotic fraternal twins only we are represented like this or if you or mention the squares this is also dizygotic and this one is also a dizygotic twins so in dizygotic twins zygotes are two two zygotes are formed and two develops into two individuals that individuals may have same sex like both are females or maybe both are males or one female and one male so any of these three is possible this dizygotic twins whereas in monozygotic twins always either both are males or maybe both are female okay i think it is clear and the next symbol siblings siblings means uh, the brothers and sisters so this three if this representation so for example here couple what we are saying the couple we are mentioned that means those who are married so circle male um, marries that male marries it is a female don't think male never marries with a, a male if it is possible in society but they cannot give the children so please remember that so it is a, a couple and this representation yes this is a, a couple and their children so the couple having three children the children are the brother and sisters they are considered as siblings so these are the siblings next so once recollected the first symbol the first symbol divorced so see this part this part indicates that divorced the couple are divorced and this divorce separated a female married another one two matings so that means two marriages so first marriage it is divorced and she married another person so this is the representation of that she marries one it is failed that means divorce separated from this and marries this we can observe in many of the film industries and this is another uh, we are studied uh, in art assisted reproductive technologies donor sperm donor or maybe ovum donor so now let's come to this couple that means uh, this female become pregnant this is the symbol for the pregnant so it is a a couple this are the couple so this in this couple the female become pregnant due to donation of so this square indicates the male 
so male donated the sperm and then she become pregnant so sperm donor here d is the sperm donor so she become pregnant because of uh, the sperms from the donor that is the representation of that next same so this couple this uh, female become pregnant due to donation of the ovum ovum donor that's why it is circle circle is the female so female donates that is ovum ovum donor and here male this is a square square indicates the male male donates the sperm that's why she become pregnant and here female provides that ovum so ovum donor and this is the last so now here uh, we are mentioned with a couple and they have see here these are the marriage couple and they have two children that is siblings so in this what does that lines indicates so the line between female and male that is called as the marriage line so now the line it is vertically drawn here that is considered as this line is considered as line of descent that means descent that is uh, the couples descent that's the generation and this horizontal line here this horizontal line is sibling line so this line here it is only two male and female it may become three or four or five so whatever may be the connections to this horizontal line it is a line draw like this and you can represent many circles no problem all these are considered as siblings the symbols which are attached to this horizontal line are considered as siblings so that's why it is a sibling line and besides that uh, there are roman numbers are mentioned this roman number is indicates the generation number so here this is first generation second generation if the number represent inside this square inside the square or maybe inside the circle that indicates the number of that male individuals and here roman number indicates the generations so these are all the symbols are used in the pedigree analysis to draw a chart four types of pedigree for a disease so for any disease uh, there is a possibility of uh, four types of pedigree so that may that is uh, either uh, the disease due to the dominant gene or the disease due to recessive or the disease due to x linked dominant or the disease is due to x linked recessive so based on that there are four types of pedigree for a disease so how that pedigree charts resemble and how we can identify that pedigree chart by seeing that chart pedigree how we can identify it is a autosomal disease or that means a dominant disease or it may be recessive or it is x link dominant or maybe recessive how we can identify by seeing that pedigree chart already we knew that uh, we have a uh, two types of chromosomes autosomal chromosomes and uh, sex chromosome 22 pairs of autosomes and one pair sex chromosome so that uh, pedigree that means a disease or a genetic disorder is due to autosomal chromosome or maybe due to x linked so if it is autosomal either dominant autosomal or maybe recessive autosomal similarly if it is x linked either it may be dominant x linked or maybe recessive x linked 
so now let's uh, see that uh, autosomal disorder with the dominant character so how we can identify that so in this such type of uh, pedigree charts autosomal dominant pedigree charts don't uh, skip the generations so the affected generations will not skip every generation is affected and affected parents can have unaffected children affected parents parents are affected they have unaffected children so based on these two points we can identify the autosomal dominant pedigree chart so examples for this autosomal dominant uh, oh, myotonic dystrophy uh, huntington's disease is the example for this autosomal dominant let's see that chart so here one of the parent is affected so here the male parent is affected so affected parents uh, can have unaffected so what are the siblings here their children are one two three four and five five children they have siblings are five so now in this the affected one the affected one having some individuals are unaffected unaffected this is unaffected individual this is unaffected individuals of four. that means uh, among that five individuals two individuals are unaffected unaffected so then we can identify that so this affected uh, suppose if any affected parents are present these generations are not skipped see here it is affected this is the on generation the affected one we can observe in this generation and here the female is affected and next generation we are observing the affected individual and come to the last one here male is affected when he marries normal female then we can observe the affected individual so the affected individuals do not skip do not skip the generation every generation we can observe the affected one so now in this case here in this both are not affected so that's why next generation there is no affected individuals consider these are affected individuals are present that effect is continue in the next generations there is no skip in the generations of the defective gene then this we will consider as autosomal dominant the second one that is uh, autosomal recessive so in this uh, autosomal recessive the defect or effect of that particular gene is skips in the generation it may skip in one generation and unaffected parents unaffected parent can have affected children unaffected that means parents we cannot found that disease but we can find the disease in their children so example sickle cell anemia cystic fibrosis are the examples let's see the pedigree chart so what the specifications we are given skips the generations it skips the generations unaffected parents can have affected children unaffected parents can have so now in this chart so which specifications are tallied first we need to find then we can easily identify whether this chart is autosomal or maybe that means autosomal recessive or maybe autosomal dominant we can easily find so skips the generations so, so here in a year one generation so generations we are mentioned with roman numbers one generation 
and this is a second generation and it is a third generation so first point is not tallied all three generation in this chart are showing this is so skips generation we are not identifying then what is need to apply unaffected parent can have affected children so this condition you can observe anywhere so see here the one of the sibling here the one of the this parents a daughter eighth one marries another one so this is a one family this is one family this is another family so there is a relation between these two families this is so now here this female a uh, marries it is unaffected and marries unaffected normal male but disease appears so observe this one the couple that means uh, parents these are the children siblings children and these for these children these two are the parents here the parents do not have the disease but they are observed the defective trait so then it is autosomal recessive these are all the key points how to identify the chart so we need to remember this key points these two key points to identify a pedigree chart whether it is autosomal recessive or autosomal dominant easy to identify by applying these points in the examination and the next one x link a dominant so what is the specification on this pedigree charts for this x link dominant this is never transfer from father to son because we are saying x linked dominant x link from father to son always y chromosome is transferred so in a son that means male male having x and y this x from the mother and y it is always from the father so that's why this is never transfer from father to son next important thing all the daughters of an affected father will be affected if in the father the x is the affected one so daughter that means females having x and x one x from the father and one x from the mother so that means the all the daughters are affected when affected father is there so all the daughters of an affected father will be affected so example vitamin d resistant rickets is the example let's see the chart and apply that two points so here female mother is affected mother is affected so what is the point is that the disease never transferred from father to son so here father is normal so in this this in this they have the four children one two three four this four one daughter and one son is affected one son and one daughter is normal correct so now see here from male always x and y it is xx female so now here xx it is a possibility because uh, male is normal no the defective gene is transferred from the one of the x it is get it is normal so in daughter one x is normal from the father and but another x is the defective that's why it is female is affected and come to this uh, male so son is always gets y from the father but the x it is from the mother so defective gene from the mother so that's why it is affected 
now if you have a doubt come to this part this part we can observe male is affected what is that point here this is never transfer from the father to son see the father is affected the disease affected gene is transferred to the all the daughters not to the sons so by applying these two points we can easily identify the pedigree chart last one x linked recessive another type disease in the pedigree to identify easily so in that the key points need to observe in that pedigree chart that is uh, males are more affected in x linked recessive males are more affected why recessive means uh, it is uh, need to present both the defective genes present then only it is expressed then only it will expressed both defective genes should be present both x x both if they have defective gene then only the character is affected if only one suppose if a d if you keep defective d represent so you can consider as x d and x d d represent defective for example defective if both are having the defective gene then only it will express the character recessive the recessive characters are expressed only in homozygous condition that means they should have both genes having need to have that defective gene if it is present like this xd and normal x then this become carrier not a defective because one is normal that's why it is dominant it suppress the another one that's why it is recessive so in recessive condition both the gene should have should have defective gene now come to the here what we are saying males are affected but males are heterozygous x and y suppose this x defective gene gets from the mother this will express because uh, there is no another gene to control over this if it is x normal x is there that will suppress the character but it is another gene it doesn't have the control over this x that's why this x is expressed out so that's why all the males are affected this is tends to transfer from mother to son and father to daughter so this is tend tends to transfer from from mother to son because uh, son gets the x always from the mother so that's why the disease always transferred from mother to son and uh, father to daughter because even though mother is uh, defective defective if father is normal then the x is normal it is not expressive that means the daughter become carrier so that's there is the carriers are always normal so if daughter is affected that means uh, she has both the genes are defective so one defective gene from the mother and another from father compulsory so daughter is affected that is due to the receiving the defective gene from the father and remember in this x linked recessive disorders the disease never transfer from the father to son x linked x linked defective diseases never transfer to the son because x is always received from the mother the son so examples for this color blindness and hemophilia are the example for this x linked recessive disorders and let's see the chart so this is the chart here suppose if you consider that uh, color blindness color blindness that is c so mother is affected so it's uh, x c color blind 
and X C. Then only this disease is affected. What we are saying that what we are seeing here, father is normal X and Y. This is the genetic compound. Now they have the children one, two, three, four children are there. Now father is normal here. This daughter will get defective gene XC and X. And here also XC and X. XC from the mother, X from the father. Father having normal X chromosome, but mother having the defective chromosome. Clear. So that's why it is a recessive, no? Due to presence of only one defective gene, it cannot express. So that's why these two daughters are normal. But when come to the sons, son always receives only Y from the father, but he receives the defective gene from the mother. That's why it is affected. Color blind, color blind son. Sons are color blind due to receiving that. So here point is tallied. Disease tends to transfer from mother to son. From mother to son. Now, this defective male marries the defective female. So, that means here X is the defective and here the X is defective. So, father also having defective X and mother also having defective defective X chromosome then what happens uh, all hundred percent of their individuals are affected so by applying this key point it is easy to identify the pedigree chart of that particular X linked recessive disorder thank you students we will continue the other concepts in the next video Already in previous videos, I told that the genetic is always puzzles. So please be careful and practice it properly.